Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice problem. So we have z to the fourth power plus 15z squared plus 9 and we're going to go ahead and factor this expression. Now this problem was actually suggested by one of my viewers, you'll see the details in a little bit, on November 17th. And I made a video which is called I factor the cortic P60. As you know, the problems, the individual problems are all numbered and this is problem number 60. And that was z to the fourth plus 5z squared plus 9. Do you see the difference? It was not the same problem, of course, because I misread it. And then this was the comment that I got, which is perfectly normal, of course. This wasn't the problem that was suggested. And thank you for the suggestion. Today, I decided to do this actual problem. So why not? And I also noticed that one of my viewers uh, presented a solution in the comment section, but I kind of find that a little long and I think I have a better approach. So let's see how this goes. All right, so we have z to the fourth power plus 15 z squared plus nine. Obviously with the miss uh, red problem, it was a little easier because I had a 5z squared, which I could turn into a difference of two squares. But guess what? We could still do the same thing. So in order to do that, I'm going to, since this is quartic, but it's biquadratic, I'm going to write it as z squared plus a constant. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to find out. Squared minus another perfect square, but that doesn't have to be z squared. So I'm going to just write it as c times z squared. And I definitely, I want c to be a perfect square. c is a real number, but I just want it to be a perfect square. So that's c z squared is a perfect square. Make sense? Okay. So that's my goal, and let's see how this goes. Now, if you expand it, obviously, you're going to get the following, z to the fourth power plus 2k z squared. Should, I should use a b so I could say 2b. But anyways, you get the idea plus k squared minus c z squared. And if you collect like terms, z to the fourth plus 2k minus c z squared plus k squared. Now, here's what I want. I want this to be factorable, and we actually kind of uh, made it factorable by writing it as a difference of two squares, at least for now, okay? So now we're going to set it equal to our original expression, which is z to the fourth plus 15 z squared plus 9. Now notice that when you compare these two things, since this is true for z values, then we're going to have the following. This got to equal 15, and this has to equal 9. So that gives us a system of equations. Let's go ahead and take a look at this system, because that's going to be interesting. So we have 2k minus c equals 15, and k squared equals 9. Obviously, k squared equals 9 is going to give you two solutions, right? One of them is k equals positive 3, the other one is k equals negative 3. You just got to recognize, make sure that you know k and c are real numbers, okay? Now, what do we do with that information, right? Oops, did I put negative 9? I meant negative 3, of course, right? So, we can go ahead and plug these in. For example, if k is equal to 3, then we get 6 minus c equals 15, which means c is equal to negative 9. So, let's go ahead and box those. If k is equal to negative 3, then this gives us negative 6 minus c is equal to 15, and that means c is equal to negative 21. But here's the problem with that. And I know this has been mentioned in the comment section, but I think in a long, rather circuitous way. Anyways, c equals negative 21 doesn't work because I want c to be a perfect square. And negative 21 is not a perfect square, so unfortunately we have to reject it, which means we also have to reject k equals negative 3, which means we end up with a single solution for k, and that is k equals 3. So k equals 3 is going to do the job, and c equals 
negative 9, of course, works along with that. Make sense? So let's go ahead and go back to our assumption like the way we wrote it. And then I'll kind of show you, you can also do this without going into any of this. So there's even an easier way to do it. Okay? So given our expression z to the fourth plus 15z squared plus 9, we were able to write it as z squared plus k quantity squared minus c z squared. Now one thing that's pretty interesting here is that c is negative. So that kind of looks problematic because you know what? This is not a difference of two squares. Haha, <laughs> I fooled you. Well, just kidding. It wasn't fooling you, but it was kind of like didn't want to give it away, right? It started as a difference of two squares, but it's actually sum of two squares. But with complex numbers, that's not an issue at all. That's actually what we want because we want to write this as a product of two polynomials that has complex coefficients. So we want the coefficients to be somewhat imaginary or complex, I guess. That's my understanding. Anyways, so let's see how this unfolds. Now we have this sum of two squares, but we want to be able to factor it. So let's go ahead and turn it again, two minute twist, into difference of two squares. Yes, that can be done with complex numbers. In real world, this is a sum of two squares, but in the complex world, I can basically write this as minus negative 9z squared, and then I can basically write the negative 9z squared as 3zi squared. Because if you square i, you get negative 1, and 9z squared multiplied by negative 1 gives you what you want. Make sense? Now this is a difference of two squares. In the complex world, that's what we want, and let's go ahead and factor it. This gives us z squared plus 3 plus 3zi, and then I'm going to arrange it next. z squared plus 3 minus 3zi. Let's go ahead and write it in a nicer form. z squared plus 3iz, because that's the coefficient of z, plus 3. That's going to be one of my factors, which is quadratic. The other quadratic is going to be z squared minus 3iz plus 3. So I think my understanding was this is what we were supposed to get. All right? So let me go ahead and show you real quick how we could approach this alternatively, and that's actually going to be much, much faster, so that really even beats the first method. So we can call this second method if you want. Here's how it goes. So I want this to be a difference of or sum of two squares again. So can I extract a perfect square from here? And the answer is yes. Looking at this, these two terms, this is z squared squared, and this is 3 squared, I'm thinking this is supposed to be z squared plus 3 squared. But that gives me 6z squared in the middle, I do have an additional 9z squared, which I can write as 9z squared, and the rest you already know. I can go ahead and write this as a difference of, two, <laughs> difference of two, two squares, like this, and then we can just go ahead and factor it the exact same way, that's going to give us the same answer. And this brings us to the end of the video, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, please let me know, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe, I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.